Before Mantis was a TV series, it had an original TV movie. With the modest success of this movie, it was greenlit as a TV series, but with dramatic overhauls to its themes and characters. This is a new universe where the movie never happened, and we get a completely new beginning for the Mantis. <laughs> Mantis is still Miles Hawkins, but every character is gone and no other actors reprise their roles or play anyone differently. This is the scientific journal of Dr. Miles Hawkins to be made public in the event of my death. I know when the truth is known, people will wonder why I felt it necessary to create the Mantis. In reality, I never did. The Mantis demanded his own creation, and I could not refuse him. And we flash back to how the Mantis was created. This self-narration journal will be used on occasion throughout the series. We start with a bike messenger who looks like a 90s cool kid, but there is actually more depth to him than first appears. Then there is Maxwell, a detective who is starting a new case. In the past few hours, we got three more DBs turned up like this, mostly young people. No health problems, no incidents, just dead for no good reason. Then we return to Bike Messenger as he delivers a package to Hawkins, who is still haunted by his injury. <laughs> Dr. Miles Hawkins. Yeah, I heard of this dude. He's like, uh, some kind of mad scientist, right? Not really mad. More like, uh, irritated. Now what's a guy with his toys got to cry about? Hey, a nice place. Oh, someone just put their foot in their mouth, and you know it can't be Miles. Kid. You can go now. Oh, it's like that. Okay, no, that's cool. Whatever. Hey, thanks for coming by. I'll get him. Hey, sure. Have a nice day. So friendly, even to the little people. You know, that is what I love about you. Bring the van around. I'll be going out. In the TV show now, Miles is a scientist with his own company, and we meet the last addition to this cast, his friend John. They are old friends, but John is bitter. Miles has ignored his company ever since he lost his legs. Dr. Hopkins, it's been a long time. Have a good day. What's this? This? This is the answer to Port Columbia's parking problems. No more garages, no more parking tickets. Not the chrysalid. This. That. That's my letter of resignation. I just have this one more project to finish up, then I can join you in blissful unproductivity. Don't put this on me. Well, who should I put it on, Miles? The man who shot you? Maybe the doctor who sentenced you to the chair? What do I have to do to make you stay? You can get your sorry ass back to work. I can't do that. Not yet. Yeah, well, fine. Go fire another housekeeper or something. I'll turn the lights out when I leave. 
It's the damn exoskeleton. I can't stop thinking about it. John, I want to walk again. One thing I like about the series is the friendship not John and Miles have. John always calls Miles on his bullshit, but he still always remains faithful to him. Their banter between each other is also pretty funny, yet also enduring as these people display their decades-old friendship. Well, even if this works and you do walk again, you'll still be the same SOB you always were. Oh. <laughs> John, I think Miles is working. Then he realizes that the suit also gives him super jumping and super strength. Next, we see a bike messenger interfere with two guys ganging up on a woman. This is to show that he has a hero's heart. Luckily, Mantis and John happen to be right next code? door where they were practicing like their suit. Call the police. John, wait. I... Bam! Comes the Mantis. We must get you back. Can you walk? Don't think so. Is he gonna be all right? Give me a hand. So what's the deal with you guys? There is no deal. Hey, can, can I do anything? If that's not the last we see a bike messenger. He is determined to find these guys, and at the same time we start to see how his network can actually be good at finding people. I'm looking for a van. All right, a black van with handicap plates. Got into a little argument with a couple garbage cans last night. Well, look at that. And whoever that's turns cool. me on to them, Let's, uh, Get stop. my next five calls. Miles arrives at the coroner's office to help with the strange plague that erupted from the body in the morgue, and then automatically damages his relationship with his future love interest. Excuse me, nurse, could you help me with this? Actually, it's Lieutenant. Leor Maxwell, Port Columbia Special Investigations. Thanks for coming on such short notice. Dr. Miles Hawkins, and I apologize. I didn't mean to assume. It's all right. I've heard a lot about you, doctor. Solid crystal and plasma. It's impossible. What is? This Boa X. You want to translate? It's a biological warfare agent, Lieutenant, capable of first generation contact killing. How could you already know all that? I created it. You may have created this virus, Dr. Hawkins, but Reese and there and me, we both inhaled it. So are we going to end up like that man we just cut open? I don't know. You had a secondary exposure. The testing on that was never completed. Not good enough, doctor. You created it. You're responsible for this. Yes. I am. But I am as confused and angry as you are, Lieutenant. I did not release this. It was part of a government contract that I resigned from. On my recommendation, it was never finished. It was destroyed. Looks like you could have done a little better job. We didn't destroy it. It was a company named Hascon. The man who plays Miles is actually a very really good actor. As you can see, his fear, anger, and guilt in every one of his expressions toward what's going on. This next scene shows you just how badass Maxwell is, as well as how desperate she is because she could be dying in just a few hours. It is not contagious. Have you had any success in creating an antivirus? Yes. Unfortunately, it was sent out for destruction with the virus itself. So whoever got their hands on your virus may have my cure? It's possible. I'm out of here. Wait, Lieutenant, there's a specific quarantine you procedure. You heard the man, I'm not contagious. I may be dying, but I'm not contagious. Where are you going? I'm going to find whoever's killing me. She finds files indicating the virus was destroyed and wants eyewitness proof from the man who signed off of it, but he happened to have quit a year ago. So, you know it's going to happen to him, right? Do you have the master key? Of course. Get it out. Don't you need a warrant? You want a warrant? I'll show you a warrant. I found it. I 
After all we've been through, I never thought you were capable of this. You become bitter since the accident, Miles. I don't know how you did it, but you loved the virus so much. You wouldn't let it be destroyed. Paranoid, too. Only two men had access, Solomon. I'm looking at the other one. And of those two men, one was a diligent inventor, the other a mere business partner, a bean counter. If you're so innocent, how do you explain that seven people are dead? Simple economics. You paid 50000 to have that virus destroyed. Along comes an enterprising soul who paid ten times that just to keep it. And with international tensions being what they are today, that virus is worth millions to any little tyrant looking around for a big stick. Catch my drift, Miles. I've got enough to go to the police. End this now, or I will. Well, I would think long and hard about that if I were you, Miles. For the sake of argument, let's imagine that those unfortunate deaths were simply a small-scale demonstration to bolster a sale. The danger for Port Columbia then would have passed, as long as the people behaved reasonably. If not, the person who had that deadly virus could certainly unleash it again, and will. We, uh, do understand each other. You won't win. Miles wastes no time in accusing him. So, he just called out the villain for being the villain that he is. Can you guess what happens to him next? Bike Messenger randomly appears in Miles and John's office and immediately starts spouting off this. Yo, guys, it's me, Taylor Savage. So who are all these people? Just a minute, how did you get in here? Well, let's just say I uh, need a new security system. Just hear me out and then I'm out of here, okay? I want in. Okay, uh, granted, you guys got the know-how and the hardware, but I'm telling you, I got the ways and the means. I think we should work together. You guys and me. And the Mantis. I'm afraid not. I grew up in Port Columbia. I, I know every single street. I know people. I know people who know people. I'm telling you, man, the Mantis could use me. They actually agree, and the next thing we see is Savage calling the secretary to get her out of the way so that he can sneak into Box's office and plant a bug on the phone. However, it is also here that Savage gets his first real taste of the problems associated with being or working with a superhero. Hey. What are you doing here? Oh, just dropping off this package. See, I said I would drop it directly on Mr. Box's desk. So <coughs> Who sent you? <gasps> Iron Horse Couriers? What is he doing in here? <gasps> you know what, I can leave. I won't come back, I promise. Well, I guess I could just stay for a sec. You know him? No. What do you want me to do with him? Gee, Tony, I don't know. What do you want to do with him? Kill him? Yeah, right. <laughs> Miles, however, then sees Maxwell getting worse, and we start to see the toll it's taking on him as he realizes that his own creation is starting to kill so many people. Doctor! Excuse me. They find that Box is selling this to the North Koreans, but what do they do about it? I mean, they're just scientists, right? Well, I guess we got a lot of work to do, Stonehenge. Stone break. And what do you mean? Well, we got the mantis suit. You guys got all sorts of cool stuff around here. Use it. Yes, of course. Uh, 
Mantis to the rescue, right? <laughs> awesome idea, Doc. Awesome. Now, what kind of firepower are you gonna pack here? No guns. That's what put me here. Usually people like to complain about the character that's new to everything because they think he's supposed because now if people can fairly identify that this is the guy that we're supposed to identify with and most of the time they hate it. However, I don't really see Savage as being that character. Granted, he is about the young age that they probably want the target demographic to be. However, he is a three-dimensional character he brings con contributions to the plot by influencing him to become the Mantis. He controls the Chrysalis better at one point to help out at the end. And he also has a network of bike messengers that can help them find information when Miles cannot. He is not just an auxiliary character placed into a universe. He actually serves a coherent role and, a, and is part of the cohesive that keeps the Mantis group together. Miles. Are you really serious about this? He's right. We're testing things in this lab that people won't hear about for years. John, if we won't use them to save lives, when can we use them? Look, I want to go on record as saying I'm opposed to this. I want to. But I can't. We then see the opening again, but now from all three perspectives of our main characters. And then, after they think he is shot and left for dead... Miles! You're alive! <laughs> the weave of the exoskeleton is apparently tight enough to keep a bullet out. Wow. Mantis vision. Look, young man. You know, you call me that again and The I'm... point is, this is not a video game. That man is my best friend, and his life is on the line. If anything happens, I don't get to reload the game cartridge and start over. Miles, where do you think you're going? Where do you think? Look, you know what happened with the suit before, and now it's taken a bullet. The chrysalid's never been field tested, and now you're leaking power. Is the chrysalid's remote control function operational? Theoretically. Good. I'm locking on the helicopter. Get ready for me to transfer control. All right, even I find that amusing that he says this is not a game and then immediately busts out a video game controller. But then we're getting into the very last action scene and it all leads to this. Wait, you can't keep it like that. You'll lose airspeed. Uh, what? Hey, bring the nose up. John, we're losing them. Look, look, this part is like a video game. Okay, I got the reflexes. I can fly it. You've got to be right under. Yes, it's yours. <laughs> all right, Miles. A little more to the left. Easy. Easy. The chrysalid's got to be right under me. creations had the potential to end the world. Another one saved it. On that day, at that moment, my life changed forever. We got the virus and the antivirus. Let's get ready to inoculate Lieutenant Maxwell. Wait. Who are you? Call me the Mantis. Well, the episode ends with his ex-partner noticing the sea pod and looking up as if he might know who it is. However, this is a good setup for his nemesis, but the assumption that he might know what that is is never put into play. The only problem I had with the series is Box. I originally thought that he was a missed opportunity villain that never showed up again. However, he does show up but as a different actor. However, I didn't realize this because the personalities of the actors that play them are so completely different you would not notice this. I was actually watching this every few days, so I wasn't actually keeping up with every, uh, everything that happened in every single episode. So I just wish that the TV show would have actually implied this and even at least mentioned that Box was his ex-partner because it is 
really out of nowhere, and you think it's just this new villain that comes up like like eight issues, eight uh, eight issues, eight episodes later. Well, that was the first episode of Mantis. That was one of my favorite shows growing up, and I always always annoyed that they never made more than one season. I I even wondered why they never made a comic book out of this. I mean, this show was out in 1994, which was still during the huge comic book boom. I mean, the death of Superman was going on, and so was the number one hot selling title. X-Men number one that sold more copies than any comic book in existence. Already we can spot the differences between these two, but let's get with the visual. The darts have a new CGI. And the freezing effect, instead of just being this, is now three seconds long and they added some visual and audio sound effects to make it look a little different. Now, Mantis uses his exosuit instead of wearing a business suit over it, which, come on, looks a lot better. In the TV show, this is how he gets his name. I'm telling you, it's true. You saw a 12-foot cyborg, man? It looked like a bug is what it looked like, like some kind of insect. Like a giant potato bug. No, no, more like uh, like one of them grasshopper types, you know? Like, uh, uh, what, do you, what do you call that? Uh, uh, the, with, the, with the legs? The praying mantis. Yes, because this actually looks like praying mantis, huh? In the movie, the Mantis actually stood for Mechanically Augmented Neurotransmitter Interception System. Now there are a few things from the movie they actually put back into the TV series. The one is the cell phones, because Hawkins develops three cell phones between him, Savage, and John that they can all use that is untraceable, similar to the ending of the TV movie. These new phones. You're telling me the calls bounce off your own personal satellite, which makes them so untraceable that I could call the White House and Hillary herself couldn't call me back. Unless, of course, I wanted her to, right? Yes, that is what I'm telling you. Love that. The aerial sequence is also reused in the TV series at one point so that they could save some money. However, they eliminated the area where the helicopter pilot dies because this is a superhero TV show. And last but not least, the hypnosis is strangely absent, however it does come back, but they mention it as being something that they didn't use because it always affected your brain too much and could really be detrimental to your health. As you could see, this is clearly two completely different TV shows in tone and theme. The racism is gone. The main theme of the TV movie where people are working with uh, gangs, trying to make a better city, uh, all, this stuff, all this stuff is just completely removed by the TV series. The first episode of the TV series is focusing on a normal, over-the-top plot about saving a virus, saving the city from a virus, and there's really no no underlying things going on that relate back to the TV pilot, the TV film, at all. So the TV series has just become a action adventure show that focuses on its three, its four main characters. Now, however, that doesn't mean it's not good. It just means that it's different, because. As we'll see in the next episode, it does go from bad to worse.